I'm going to run you through how I like to make a, um, a platinum light gauge hook rig, uh, how I like to rig my lures with the, with the light gauge hooks. Um, you'll see I like to use this style of rig, it's a 180 degree um, hook rig, I use this in every, um, every lure style, I don't have um, two different rigs for different styles of lures, I use this in every, um, every uh, lure style. The reason I use this hook rig like this is um, the hooks are so small that they don't really dictate the way the lure runs, but uh, in an angle face lure I always like to run a 180 degree um, double hook rig, so I just use this in, in, in every lure. Um, makes it easy for me, I can just make at the start of the season, I can make a bunch of rigs up, I can have them sitting there, and when I want to change the rig, it's a, it's a, it's a, only takes me a couple of minutes to do that. But there's a couple of little key things that you need to um, do when you make the rig, so I'm going to run you through how I, um, how I make the rig now. So first of all, you want to grab yourself um, a, a couple of light gauge hooks like that. Um, they are ridiculously sharp, so what I do is I cut yourself a couple of little bits of chew, and just slide them over the end like that to start with. Now, that little tip there will stop you getting a hook in your hand because it's amazing when you start to uh, use these hooks, they just seem to jab you like all over the place. So if you can put that little bit of tubing on there, that's gonna stop a world of pain for you to start. The only thing is when you finish the rig, make sure you take the tubing off. So that's the first little bit. Now, the next bit is, is you need to put some zinc on the hooks. This is very, very important. It's probably the most crucial part of the whole hook rig. Um, if you do not put this on your hook, the tip of the hook will be dissolved by lunchtime on the first day of you trolling your, your hooks. It is very, very important. So you need to check that every day before you go out. You need to make sure the zinc is in perfect condition. Now, I'll show you how to put it on. So. You'll see it comes as a as a as a uh, a square like that, or a rectangle. Sorry. Um, first of all, you can cut it lengthways like that, and that's for one style of, of hook. And then you can cut it widthways like that. Now, I use both pieces, so I put half a piece on each hook. So, and there's a reason for this. I'll show you in a minute once we get going. So on the first hook. Put it just at the start of the bend of the hook. Okay, wrap that one round like that. Just like that. Okay. Just like that. And the second one, I'm going to use the one I cut widthways. Like that. And you're going to wrap that one just on the start of the shank of the hook, past the bend. Okay. So that's your two hooks with the zinc ready to go. Now, the reason why we did them in two different places is when the rig is actually finished, you'll see that that wire is going to sit there and it's going to rub. It's going to rub on that bit of zinc there. So if we move that piece of zinc up there, you'll notice that that zinc is quite worn, that one. So if we move the zinc up to that, that position there, that's going to stop that wire rubbing on it. So there's a few little things that I, even I've learned over time um, that, that, can, that can make the rig last a bit longer, okay? So now that you've got your two hooks ready to go, you want to take your piece of wire, and um, I've predetermined, I've, I've already cut it to length. Um, I actually have a book that I keep all the lengths of everything that I use, um, all the hook rig wires, the size, everything. Um, it's a really good thing for you guys to keep a book and to keep all your measurements because then it's going to make it really easy when you go to re-rig anything. And as I've mentioned in, um, in previous videos, this is all about being consistent. Um, and you, if you, you take this consistent approach to everything, it'll follow on down the track to when you're actually fishing and the results will start to get more consistent when you're out on the water. So I've got my piece of wire. I like to use a 1.3 mil wire. You can use a little bit lighter, a little bit heavier. Some guys use one mil, some guys use 1.5 mil. But uh, 1.3 mil is, is quite a happy medium. You've got to remember with wire, there is no chafe. So it, it's, it's, it, can, it maintains its strength the whole time. So you can use a lot lighter wire than what you think. 
Okay, so I've got my piece of wire. Now I'm going to put the crimp on and I'm going to do, use the back hook. Now the back hook is the one with the piece of zinc down the shank of the hook, okay? So I go in there, in the eye, create the loop. And always when you put it on a, on a video, it makes it look a little bit tougher than it is, but put it on. Now, a little secret here is to stop the wire coming out is actually just cinch it there quickly, okay? Now that will hold your wire um, in the crimp without falling out. So then just slide it down, small loop like that, and crimp it. So with wire, I like to crimp all the way at the end. Just crimp it, crimp it at both ends, and then just flip it over and do the middle. So I like to crimp the whole crimp. Okay. Now we do exactly the same thing at the other end, but at 180 degrees to that back loop. Push it in. Put a little cinch there to hold the wire in. And now just create your loop, slide it up like that. Crimp it again, all the way at the end. Crimp. Crimp. Roll it over and crimp the middle. And while you roll it over, is so you get a nice straight crimp. Okay? So that's the, the nucleus of the hook rig made. That's your back hook right there, okay? So as you can see, it's 180 degree. Once you lay it down on that hook rig, you'll see it's going to sit like that. Okay? Now, second bit. Put a little bit of heat shrink on the whole rig to hold it all together. Now, I'm going to need three pieces. So, first of all, what you're doing is like I like to keep this back hook free swinging. So you're going to slide that piece over the eye, and you're going to push it down so it covers half the eye. Okay. Now what that's going to do is it's going to allow the hook to, to swing freely, but it's going to stop it from locking the wire over, and it's going to stop it from doing this right there. That's going to be no good. Okay. So that's why we're putting that, that piece of heat shrink halfway down the eye like that. Let's get my heat gun. Heat it up. Takes two seconds. Now, with this heat shrink, you want to use glue, like self, like the heat shrink with the glue in it. What that does is that glues, once it dries, it glues the heat shrink in place and it won't slide, okay? Well, it's got less chance of sliding. If you don't use the one with the, um, with the uh, ad, ad glue inside it, what'll happen is you'll do it nicely, it'll all look perfectly, and then that piece will just slide off like that. So the glue helps it hold it together. So you're gonna do exactly the same thing over the eye of the wire, okay? So just heat that one up. Okay, so that's the back one done. You can just, while it's warm, you can still just push it up like that. And that's the connection right there, okay? That's gonna stop it doing that looping over like I showed you before. Now, the final bit is putting the rig together. You've got one piece that's going to hold it all together. Um, just slide that over the eye. That one piece, like slide that over the eye of the front hook. Now, slide the back hook in. And just hold it all together while you put some heat on that. So get it into that position there. And then just apply the heat to the rig. And that's your rig done, right there. Okay, all finished. Okay, so once you've got your rig completed, I'm actually gonna rig this lure up here with that rig. So 
I normally use a wind on leader for my um, light gauge hook rigs, um, but you can use a full length leader, but I do like to use a minimum of nine feet. I personally fish 12 feet as my jack trace, which is a jack trace is the trace on the lure to the swivel. So the reason why I like to do that is I, I like the lure to get away from the, the fish. The, the weight of the lure definitely affects, um, if you're too close, it'll definitely hinder um, yeah, keeping the hooks in the fish, the, the fish will be able to use that weight of the lure to try to dislodge the fish. And I've seen it happen a lot, a lot of times. So we're going to put a leader on this one. Um, with my lures, I, I traditionally I fish like anywhere from 250 to 400 pounds, depending on where I'm fishing. Um, for marlin, I definitely don't think it matters too much about how heavy the leader is. Um, but in relation to the lure that you're fishing, you want to you want to match the leader size to the lure. But um, if you are fishing for tuners, um, which is another story, again, leader weight is a big, big part of it. They can definitely see it and it, and it, and it makes a difference to try to fish as light a leader as possible. But for, for marlin fishing, what we're talking about here with these light gauge hooks, um, I traditionally fish 250 to 400 pounds, depending on um, what species of marlin I'm targeting. So um, I'm going to take my, um, my mono, I'm going to cut myself a little piece of tubing, chafe tubing. And I'm just going to create a loop and put my hook rig on. Now, I don't want too big a loop here. I've gone through the, through the eye of the hook, so in the wire, eye of the hook and the wire, both are on there. I've gone through the crimp. Now, I'm going to burn the end here. Now, this does two things. It's going to help create the loop and stop the mono pulling through. And it's gonna add a little bit of strength. Now, I have actually caught fish without this being crimped, just the piece of um, the burnt mono on the end. I don't suggest you do that, but it just shows you how strong it is. But now you saw how I pulled that up and I created that loop, okay? It's not too big, it's not too bulky. Just like that, okay? So that's your connection to your hook rig right there. Now I'm going to get my crimper, I'm going to crimp that up. Now, when I crimp um, uh, mono, I'm just coming back from the end like that. I don't know if you can see it there, but I'm coming back from the end and I'm crimping it back from the end. So, just touch that up again. So that's it, all crimped on there, ready to go. So the last thing I'm gonna do, is I'm just gonna stiffen that join up with a bit of, bit of tape. So I like to hook it on something. I've got a, I've got a clamp on my table here, I don't know if you can see it, but I'm just gonna put a bit of tape on, on here to hold the rig all together. Get that nice and tight. You don't need too much. Let's go back down the body. Just break it off. And that's it. That's your connection right there. Very, very straightforward. So you can put a little bit of glue on that, but just for this video, um, I'd have to wait for it to dry, so I couldn't show you how to do it. But yeah, just a little drop of uh, super glue on that, leave it for five minutes till it's dry, and then put it inside the lure. So I'm gonna take the other end on my leader, slide it through my lure. Cut another piece of chafe tube for the swivel end. Slide my crimp on, slide my chafe tube on. Once again, take my lighter and burn the end. Make a nice mushroom like that. Slide that up to the end of the crimp. Now, 
This is the secret. Slide the tubing down to that end where you've got that mushroom, stopping the, stopping the, the, the mono going through the crimp. Now pull it and you'll create a nice loop very easily. If you go at the other end, I'll show you. If you put it at the other end, if you put the tubing at this end, like that, the end, it's not gonna, it's not gonna wanna create the, the loop. See, I'm, I'm pulling quite hard and it's stopped. So always put your chafe tubing down at the, um, at the uh, end with the mushroom on it, the tag end, and then you'll just be able to pull a loop in like that very easily. Okay, let me just get your crimpers again. Put it in. And that's it, all done. It's a rig lure. So just pull it up. You'll see all my lures have a um, have a have a hook lock on them. Push that inside there just to hold it. And that's your rig lure right there. Now, I'm going to show you a couple of other little things now that we've got that rigged. Um, you'll, um, you'll see I've got a couple of other lures here. Um, this is actually a lot bigger lure. Um, and the reason I, I've got this bigger lure here is that a lot of the time fishing with these smaller lures um, that, I've just, that I've got here and that I rigged, that's traditionally what I fish with. But... Sometimes when you're getting a lot of bycatch like skipjack and stuff like that, I like to put a bigger profile lure out just to try to eliminate the bycatch as much as possible um, because I'm obviously targeting marlin when I'm talking about um, uh, this, this style of, um, of, of fishing. Um, so I'll put a bigger lure out, but the problem with that is with the small, like what am I trying to achieve is a mouth hookup, and I mentioned that earlier. Now, that's why I like to use these smaller lures. Um, because when the fish comes and eats it, I'm hopefully it's gonna the, the smaller target will present the hooks into the mouth region a lot better. Because the strongest place to hook one of these fish with the um, with these little light gauge hooks is both hooks buried in the mouth. Very very strong. So if you can use a smaller lure, the fish has got a smaller target. It's getting more chance of getting the hooks into the mouth. So when I use a bigger profile like this, I'll actually cut the lure shorter. I'll cut it the same length. As, um, as the smaller lures like that, you'll see it's very, very similar length um, from the skirt. And what I'll do is I'll actually cut nearly all the strands out underneath. So in the underskirt, there's very, very little skirt. There's probably only four or five strands. And the reason for that is, is to allow the hooks to penetrate through the skirt a lot more because these skirts are a lot thicker in the bigger lures. In the, in the small lures like that, they're very thin. The hooks can penetrate out a, a lot easily, a lot more easily. So those are a couple of things that I, that I do um, when I rig certain lures. Um, but that's the general uh, thing about the light gauge hook rigs. The couple of key factors, remember, are to make sure the zinc is perfect every day. If the zinc is not perfect, pull it off, put a new piece on, and, um, and keep, that, keep on top of that. Now, the other thing is, too, I get asked, like, how long do the hook rigs last? They should last you five to seven days, okay? So what you want to do at the end of the day, make sure you wash the lure, wash the rig with fresh water, pull it out, lay the lure and, um, and, um, and hook rig separate. So just pull them out like that and lay the hook rig on a towel with the lure, with it outside the, the lure like that. Let it dry overnight and it'll be good to go in the morning. So I've got one here that's over a week old. It's actually caught a fish. Um, still good to go. I could probably use it again, but I won't. Um, but you'll see that there's very, very little rust on that, um, that hook rig. Now, just as I mentioned there about how long, um, you know, should you use the hook again after catching a fish? I would say no. The hook rig's done its job. Um, uh, you know, for the, for the sake of a few dollars, replace it, put a brand new one out there. Um, you never know really what's been stressed with that hook while you've been fighting that fish. So once you've caught a fish, the hook's done its job, it's time to replace it. So that's how I rigged my, um, my light gauge hook rigs. Um, yeah, but uh, I'll, 
you need to be on top of your maintenance to get the most out of the hooks. Thank you.